Hello everyone. So today we will studying the topic file formats in bioinformatics. So this topic I have divided into two portions. So we will be first dealing with first part. Now introduction to file formats. In the field of bioinformatics, there exist many different file formats that store DNA and protein sequences or structural information. Means uh, it's just similar kind of a thing. Suppose we have a word uh, text kind of a text which we want to save. We have either we can save it as a text file, we can save it as a PDF file or we can save it as a word file. So there are various formats that exist to save that file. In the similar matter, the biological information that is derived from the experiment can be uh, saved in different file formats. So uh, now these file formats depend upon the what kind of uh, information we want to save. Suppose we want to have a DNA sequence information or DNA structure information or we want to have protein sequence information or we want to have protein structure information. So as far as possible there are many formats that exist to uh, save that biological information but no single format is ideal. So there are many used different formats and these formats can be converted into one form into another just to become to make it easier to access or to share the biological information. Now what was the require of the file format? Uh, because we have to save the information in the databases. So for saving the information in the databases, we need to have a particular format for each information that is being saved. Because uh, after accessing the data at the back end, when we will ask the database to give us this information, so it can fetch with that particular format only. So this is the reason the database requirement is there that particular file format is required to save in that database. Second is better representation of the data. It allows us if the particular format is set to save the data, it allows us for the better representation. For example, if anybody access that information, that information can be accessed and the information available in that format will be very much useful for the user that is accessing the information. So these are the reasons why we need the file formats. Now these file formats are divided into two categories. First is sequence file format. Sequence file format in which the file formats in which the sequences are saved means either these sequences can be either DNA sequences or the protein sequences and second category is molecular file format. Molecular file format is also known as structure file format that means uh, in this we save the structural information in these kinds of a file. So first we will see the sequence file format. Some of the sequence file formats are GenBank file for flat file format, FASTA format, EMBL format, GCG format, GCG MSF format, cluster W format, FISBROAD format. So we will be dealing only two types of format that are being majorly used worldwide. First is GenBank format and second is FASTA format. Now GenBank format. GenBank format or GenPEPT format. Accordingly, if the information saved in this data is the nucleotide information or the DNA based information, then it is known as GenBank format. But if the protein information is there, then it is known as GenPAT format. A brief about this, it was it is used by NCBI. It is divided into three parts. First is header, second is features and third is sequence. In header format, it is a direct and very precise or brief introductory means a brief introductory portion. It provides the introduction about the organism. I will be showing this in the next slides. Second is feature. What are the, uh, suppose we are having a nucleotide sequence. In that nucleotide sequence, how many genes are present? Among those genes, how, which, how many proteins are there? All this kind of information is present in the features format. Third is sequence format. Third, in sequence for, uh, form, 
it starts with the word origin and thereafter it is followed by the sequence. Now first see the header section. Header section of the GenBank on the GenPep format. For example, if you see in this slide, first is locus. Locus means on that organism, what is the locus ID of this particular sequence? How many base pairs? Likewise, in this case, 5028 base pairs. What kind of a sequence it is? It is kind of a DNA sequence. And this is the date on which the sequence have been submitted or we can say published. Now, definition means it provides the information of the sequence and the organism. Means or definition means Saccharomyces, for example, which gene TCP1 beta gene and partial CDS means partial coding sequences. And uh, another genes present AX12P, XL2 or REV7P or REV7 genes. These are these complete the complete CDS. So, what kind of genes are present in these sequences? A brief information is provided here. Next comes the accession number. Now, when the uh, data is saved in the database, it particular ID is given. That ID is known as the accession number. So, this is the accession number under which this information is saved in the database. Second is the version. What is the version? It's just like we are software. Uh, in the softwares, we are having the upgraded forms. So, in this version form, what happens is, suppose one scientific team isolated the sequence and then sequenced, they submitted the sequence first. Thereafter, another team isolated the same sequence and found that there are some changes in the sequence that is already had been submitted. So, the latest submitted sequence will be contained with the version dot one. And GI is the GenBank ID. This accession number is common for the NCBI, whole NCBI database. But this GenBank ID is for this particular GenBank database in the NCBI. Because NCB, in NCBI, many databases are present. Now, what is the source? Source of the sequence is Saccharomyces organism, what, which is the organism name? Saccharomyces again and this is the classification, uh, kingdom classification that means it is a eukaryota, fungi, escomyota, myocota and then further on. Then comes author, authors means who isolated the sequence and who have published the paper. Which paper they have published, this is the title of the paper, in which journal, yeast is the journal and uh, 10 is the issue and this is the volume number. In this particular volume uh, journal, on which date? Means 1503, this paper is present from 1503 to 1509 page number. Next is your PubMed ID. PubMed ID means this particular paper can be accessed from the bibliographic database from uh, at the NCBI that is known as PubMed. In that PubMed, what is the entry number? This is the ID which is the PubMed ID and uh, thereafter again authors for the second sequence for this this author were for the Rev7 se uh, sequence and these are the authors of the AX12P gene sequence and again the journal in which this particular uh, paper has been submitted that is the genes development and then again the paper ID of this particular paper. This is the header section so it gives the brief introduction about everything the organism, the authors related, the title of the paper, the accession number, uh, what kind of information is there, how many base pairs. In case it is a protein sequence then here it will write the sequence number suppose 728 let's suppose and uh, then base pair it will write AA that means it is a amino acid sequence and in, instead of DNA here it will write the protein. Now next comes the feature section. In feature section the source of the organism that means from 125028 the coding region first is from 1 to 206 
and this corresponding to corresponds to TCP1 beta gene and uh, this is the translation of the gene sequence and another gene sequence that is present in this nucleotide data uh, nucleotide base pair is from 687 to 3158 and uh, this is the again what kind of a gene it codes gene it, the name of the gene it's AX12P and the protein ID is given what is the protein ID of this gene and thereafter it is followed the protein sequence. So in features basically what we see is the coding sequences, the genes and the protein sequences. Now next last comes the sequence section of the GenBank or the JetPep format. First line contains the origin word then from first line 1 here starts the sequence. This sequence is start uh, each this sequence is divided into 6 columns. Each column contains 10 base pairs or 10 amino acids. If you count here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in a single line if you see there are present 20 base pairs or if the amino acids are there in this single line that uh, 60 amino acid will be present. In the next line it starts from 61 number that means either base pairs of the amino acids it starts from the 61 and it ends till again six, plus 60 that means 120 and next line 121 and a rest line as multiples of 60. So this is the sequence format that is present in the gen bank. Uh, as I told you that if the DNA sequence is present, the, the base pairs, nucleotide base pairs will be written here and if this, it is the gen pep format, then here the amino acid sequences will be written. The amino acid sequence will be having the same pattern. That means the sequence will be divided into six columns and each column will contain 10 amino acids. Uh, that means in single line, total 60 amino acids are present. So this was about the gen bank format or gen pep format. Next is the FASTA file format. FASTA file format is a text based format for representing either nucleotide sequences or the peptide sequence. It is a very brief, it is a very precise information of the sequence in which base pairs of the amino acids, amino acids are represented in a using a single letter code. So uh, a sequence in FASTA format begins with a single line description. Single line description. I will explain you how followed by the lines of sequence data from the second line. The description line is distinguished from the sequence data by the greater than symbol in the first column. It is recommended that all the lines of the text are shorter than 80 characters in length. What does that mean? Now the faster format first recognition is it starts with the greater than the sign. Whether it is nucleotide the sequence or it is protein sequence it starts with the greater than sign. Then followed by the ID number, if the GenBank ID is there, then this GenBank ID is there and if the GenPapt is there, then the GenPapt ID is there. Then the reference sequence, reference sequence, the ID number of the NCBI, what is the ID in the NCBI database. Then the organism name and then the what kind of a protein it is like this case it is an enzyme ferrodoxy oxidoductase and if any other information what kind of a gene then the gene name it is written okay so then now the most important thing in this particular format it either the nucleotide sequence or the amino acid sequence it will start from the next line in the next line it will start and this particular life line can contain maximum of 80 base pairs or 80 amino acids that is the standard format that is followed but we can uh, decrease or increase the length as per our requirement so this is the format of the FASTA file format so this was about the sequence file format thank you